He's only going to get better, folks. He, he still has to think about a lot of the things he does on the floor. Whenever you think as an athlete, you're not nearly as quick or aggressive. That will come with time and as his instincts grow in terms of how he plays the game of basketball. Dimitri Goodson has checked in. He's the freshman from Spring, Texas, right outside of Houston. Backdoor, Bolden. Blocked with two hands by the beat. Well, that's goaltender. Or is it a foul? I think it's a foul, and if it is, it's his third. That's a tough call there that goes against the beat. I love his attention to coming over for the help. And there's contact there. There's contact with the body. And that's a tough one. And if you're, if you're Jim Calhoun, you, you're more concerned with the fact that your team is being cut up with cuts and not really keeping bodies in front of them. And again, what do you do now, though, if you're Calhoun? He picks up his third early in the second half. Do you send him to the bench? Well, the, the one advantage you have with Gavin Edwards, he played so well, he's earned the trust of Calhoun to come in early in the second half. So I would assume they're going to go with him. And the beat's going to have to be careful the next few possessions, though. He cannot pick up a fourth foul here before they're able to substitute for it. Gonzaga gets back into the 2-3 zone. Price of the baseline. Adrian, power dribble to the basket. And a foul. So Adrian will go to the line Monday on an all-new Late Show. Don't miss Dustin Hoffman. And Tuesday, catch Mickey Rourke. Plus, find out if Dave can knock the meatball off the Late Show tree only on CBS. Third foul on Micah Downs, who will now check out. Stephen Gray will replace him. Jeff Adrian at the line. Six points today. First one off the mark. Alpha Beat heads out of the game. Edwards coming back in, Downs out of the game, and Steve Gray comes back in. Huge advantage for Gonzaga. They can go small and have the luxury of knowing that the beat's not in the game. They're a much better team small, I think, than UConn is because they have more versatility and size on the perimeter. 40 to 40. Game top. Fargo went out of the game because of an injury earlier and hasn't returned. He's overstretching a little bit his calf. And he's yeah. trying to stretch it out. And a foul as Bolden fouls Dyson coming up the floor. That's his second. So Price will walk it up with Edwards, Austin, Adrian. And there's Cargo trying to get loose. UConn, you've got to get the basketball at the free throw line. That's the one area they've had some success. Right up there you go. Adrian inside, no. Cleared by Day. Goodson, he's also a burner. No look pass to the baseline. Bold it up and in. Got another foul. We talked earlier about the quickness of, of Kimba Walker, but Goodson also has got some, some rocket fuel going. Great push, good no look. And again, with no defeat, you don't have the presence and the shot blocking ability. You're going to see Gonzaga continue to attack the rim. So Bolden going to the free throw line. He was all West Coast Conference last year. That's the free throw. And Gonzaga takes a three point lead. They were down by 11 in the first half. Now a half court drop. Looks like a 1 2 2. They back out of it into the 2 3 zone. Price back door the baseline. Dyson lifts it up. No, but a foul. And there's a perfect example. Get the ball at the free throw line in the middle of that zone. Force that help. And then you're able to make plays here. AJ Price runs a pick and roll. And again, Heidfeld has to step up. It doesn't allow him to guard the rim. And Heidfeld picks up his third foul. So now Mark Few has a decision to make. The chess match gets even better. It is, but it's a bigger concern right now for UConn than it is for Gonzaga because they don't feature Heifelt defensively nearly as much as UConn does with the beat. So Micah Downs will do the job on the interior. And remember, with that zone, it gives you the luxury of not having to feature him from a defensive standpoint. So Heifelt checks out of the game. And Micah... Downs comes back in. Downs is a very good defender. Six, eight, very long, kind of a, like the Andre Karolinko yeah. type. 
And the scouts view him as that type of player at the next level. You know, he's not going to be a big time scorer, but he's just got a great knack defensively, and his size allows him to guard multiple positions. Here's Goodson. Got a great handle on the ball. Fargo still on the bench. Bolden. Got a solid handle in space. Gray. Offensively, he's been stellar. Porter kicks it. Day fade away. Got it. Nice. I was about to question the shot because he had the jumper initially, wouldn't take it. Ended up taking a tougher shot, but able to knock it down. Edwards dumps it down. Day takes it away. Here comes Goodson. The burner. Down the lane. And has it stolen. Dyson picked his pocket. Bam. And that's a huge play. Remember, Cargo's not in the game right now. He would be normally the one controlling tempo. And that's just a young mistake there by Goodson. You know, he's getting caught up in the hype of the moment in the game. This is the biggest game he's probably played in his young career. A great play there by Dyson to come up with the steal. So now, interesting, the beat ready to check back into this game, Greg, with all uh, 16.43 remaining. Now, uh, don't forget, year after year, more people watch CBS than any other network. From all of us here at CBS, we're wishing you the best this holiday season and looking forward to a great new year. Forty-five, forty-four. Zags with the lead. They swing it. Down. Let's see if this is the matchup right here that's going to be a tough one for the beat. Great decision and recognition by Gonzaga. Get Austin Day the basketball at the top. Uh, as I said, talked about the beat earlier, he's like the great white shark. When you get him out the paint, he is not nearly as fearless. He's not going to have the lateral movement to stay with Austin Day. He's able to get to the free throw line. So Austin Day going to the free throw line. Here's a player at six feet 11, so versatile. And they feel that as time goes on, at 6'11", he's got some incredible guard skills. Oh, he, he really does. When I look at him, I, I, he's a guy who fills in the blanks. By that, I mean, he, stat, he stuffs the stat sheet. He rebounds it. He assists it. He can score it. He defends it. He does everything out on the floor. It's very versatile, and his playmaking skills are improvement. Remember, he's deferring right now to guys like Fargo. It's hard to take over a game when you play with Jeremy Fargo. And you use the analogy that Connecticut fans can uh, really understand with Rudy Gay. Exactly. That, that's a very good point. You ha you're going to defer when you play with great players, and that's the way you're supposed to play. You have to earn the right to be a dominant player. Gray with the rebound. Bold it. In transition. Cut off. The kick. Day shows it. Baseline. Pargo driving. That ball really moving around for Gonzaga. Unselfish. Gonzaga. The law baseline. Micah Downs almost had it. And what a wild feeling right now with this basketball game. And it's just simply Micah Downs not really understanding where he was on the floor. He could have laid that in, but what's the great athlete. And what a great game we got. Gonzaga by three. All right, Timmy, 47 to 44. Gonzaga with the lead and not a good sign for Connecticut. Jerome Dyson has a knee injury and he has been being taken rather in the locker room. He has 11.7 at halftime. That's a huge loss too because he's their best perimeter def defender. And, and what's happening out with the beat in the game? Gonzaga's going small. And with Austin Day playing center, that means the beat is going to be left out on the perimeter. And with him having three fouls, Day height felt downs. He's even more important because UConn doesn't have the overall versatility that Gonzaga has. And look for this matchup now because if the beat has to guard Day, it's going to make it very difficult for him to defend the rim because of this young man's versatility out on the perimeter. And you were talking about the comparison between Rudy Gay 
and Austin Day. Well, when Rudy Gay was at UConn, people wanted him to take over more, but folks, he played with three other lottery picks. It's hard for a freshman to come in and take over in that circumstance, similar to what Austin Day's got. Jeremy Cargo, Bolden, Heifel, these guys are all potential first-round picks. He's got to buy his time like it used to be for freshmen and young players back in the day. Very talented inside the beat. Forced it up. Can't get it to fall. Down to the rebound. Gonzaga up by three. Bolden the other way with Gray, Downs, Day, and Pargo. Here's Pargo guarded by the freshman Walker. Pick and roll. Gray driving. Got his shoulder square and knocks it down. And you see it again. The beat is nowhere to be found on the interior because he's hugging up on Day. That's an adjustment that's going to have to be made by Jim Calhoun. Stephen Gray put that ball on the deck with the left hand. Austrian fires a jump shot. Oh, the beat is there. Can't hold on, and it's knocked out of bounds. He'll head the other way. Well, folks, I make the point about the beat being a great white shark. Well, this is the ocean. And anytime you get a shark outside of the ocean, He's not going to be nearly as effective, and you see how that rim is wide open. He cannot get back to defend the rim. Adjustments have to be made by Jim Calhoun.